Oh no, scary tactical assault rifle looking thing. Except it's not. This is the Air Javelin by Umarex. This is not actually a firearm, technically. This is more of a CO2 crossbow. It's not a crossbow either, obviously, but it shoots arrows which fit over the barrel like this. And they're propelled by CO2. In fact, I'm gonna have to take the arrow back out to load the CO2. Put on a tiny drop of oil to make sure that the seal stays lubricated. And uh, just goes right in. Super fascinating. I'm sure that's fun to watch. Watch me screw my thing. There we go. So, arrow goes on, clicks into the seal, and I'm just gonna shoot it directly over the chronograph right here so we see what a fresh shot is like in terms of power. But first, I'm actually gonna put on hearing protection because it does seem loud enough to be able to cause gradual hearing loss over time. Uh, but if 22 can do that as well, which a lot of people are unaware of apparently. And as far as I can tell, this seems to be louder than a 22. I can't say for sure because I cannot measure the decibel. Either way, it's kind of loud. So, safety off, cocked. And let's see what we get here. Nothing. All right, I put it more directly under a light now. Hopefully that'll help. Mm, not yet. I'm a professional. Professional derp fuzz. All right, this is the most ridiculously improvised setup that I've done. I want some more consistency to see if the shots really land in the same spot. Okay, let's go. No. Crony still doesn't like it. We need more light then, what can you do? There we go. That's finally enough light. That's literally as much as I can give it. So apparently chronographs are even more light hungry than cameras. Two fifty one. The speed is really impressive. The only thing that takes a little bit basically is aligning the end of the arrow with the barrel so you can slide it over and then you just gotta push it deep enough to make sure it's properly seated. And then of course, the charging handles very quick. 240. 227. 220. 216. 207, yeah. The performance gradually decreases as you empty the CO2 tank. 206. 198. 208. 201. There are clearly a lot of shots in one of these. It better be, they're kind of pricey. 189. And there we are. That's the end of it. Last little bit is draining and it's empty. So let's try the other method. All right, so now I'm gonna try this CO2 adapter, which is also made by Umarex. And the way that works is you put two CO2 capsules in. There, close this up. And then puncture the rear cartridge like this. And now it's used the same way as the large one. So I'm hoping that this won't have any significant drop in power. Compared to the large ones, hopefully it's just gonna be less shots out of it. This said, not only are they cheaper, but you can also use them if you decide to shoot just a little bit. 
at a time. 261. 266. Error. 246. 241. 235. 233. 204. I accidentally bumped it, so I threw it off a little bit. Whoa. Okay, yeah. I could tell by how low that went. So you get substantially fewer shots out of it, but you also get a smaller range of inconsistency. It doesn't decrease quite as much. It drops toward the end, but not as much as with the large CO2 cartridge. Okay, so what do I think about the air javelin? Cool design. I like how it handles. It's extremely light because the exterior is mostly polymer. You can easily hold this out with one hand for however long you want. Um, because of the size, it wouldn't be very practical to shoot it that way, but it's light enough. It's not even a firearm, technically. Like in most places, this would not, I think, be classified as such because not only does it shoot arrows rather than bullets, but also it doesn't actually propel projectiles through the barrel. You put something over top of the barrel and it's just the CO2 that goes through the barrel. And it's quite a bit faster to load than a crossbow. You just insert the arrow, cock the handle, and there you go, it's ready to shoot already. So it's very easy to operate. Replacing the CO2 cylinder is also quick and easy. So there's a lot to like about it. I also have some issues. Uh, now, this depends really on how I look at it. Do I look at this as an alternative crossbow or do I treat it as an alternative air gun? That actually makes a difference because if you look at it as a, as a CO2 rifle uh, alternative, it's cheaper to run because you just need the CO2. You don't need to buy pellets or BBs or anything like that. And the, the arrows are reusable. If you break or lose one, it's not gonna be super cheap to replace, but it's not that big of a deal. If you compare it to a crossbow, on the other hand, you have running costs. With a crossbow, you don't. I mean, aside from replacing arrows or bolts, um, you don't need to worry about CO2. And the CO2 is kind of pricey, especially if you go with the, the 88 gram cylinders. So I did the math. I counted the number of shots. Uh, I, I didn't show everything in the video because it's just too much. You know, 45 shots in a row, ain't nobody got time to sit through that. So I just counted them. So 188 gram CO2 cylinder in Canada where I bought it cost $12.50. So again, that's Canadian dollars. US dollars are gonna be a little bit lower. So getting 45 shots out of it means that you pay about 28 cents per shot. That's quite a bit. I've, I've shot nine millimeter for 28 cents. If you go for the 12 gram CO2 cylinders with the adapter, now you're at $2.19 Canadian per two cylinders, which gives you 11 shots, so that's 20 cents a shot. So at that price, if you shot 45 times with the, the 12 gram, it would cost you nine bucks compared to the 1250 for the 88 gram cylinder. So over time, it's gonna add up. Plus, I like about the cylinder that you don't have to shoot as much if you don't want. With the, with the large one, you have to shoot 45 or you know something like, it's probably gonna vary a little bit. It's, it's not gonna be exactly 45 every time because it depends on the temperature. It depends on how quickly you shoot, but somewhere around there, 45 plus minus a couple. So you'd have to shoot them all uh, unless you want to lose some because you can't store it with a cylinder inserted. You have to remove it. So the smaller ones are not only more economical, they're also a bit more practical. Plus uh, it, with the tests, I did, it seems that you get more consistency 
out of the smaller ones. They always drop, but they don't seem to, the performance doesn't seem to drop quite as much as with the large cylinder, where over time you get lower and lower and lower, and you get really low FPS ratings toward the end. Now, I'm not 100% confident that my measurements were perfectly precise, because I was dealing with suboptimal light, but it makes sense to me because the official statement is 300 plus FPS, and generally when manufacturers measure it, it's under ideal conditions, so ideal temperature, first shot on the cylinder, and it's gonna be muzzle velocity, so measured closer to it than I did. So ac accounting for all that, I think it's close enough, so again, that's, that's a very optimistic rating. Any FPS rating you get from a manufacturer is generally very optimistic under perfect conditions and everything. And so this is one of the issues that I see with it. It just drops quite substantially over time. And that makes it somewhat inconsistent also with the point of impact, because as you, you get less FPS, the point of impact is gonna shift down, especially at greater distances. I just did it at only about 15 meters or yards, which is not a far distance. So I would expect this to drop quite a bit more at greater distances as you near the end of the cartridge or even halfway along. And again, for a CO2 powered air gun, that's normal. You, you have to expect that. For a crossbow, not so good if you wanted to compare it that because the crossbow is gonna be consistent. There's gonna be a little bit of variation, but it's, it's, it's not gonna drop over time. So I like how it handles and operates. It's a lot of fun to shoot. I can't say too much about the accuracy because I was so limited in the, the space I had available. Now, I did not want to shoot it outside because it is loud, and especially since it hasn't been that long since the tragic shooting further up in Nova Scotia, I didn't want to freak out the neighbors. And by the way, I'm looking at it from the perspective of recreational target practice. Since I have no interest in hunting, it is advertised as suitable for hunting small game, and I would imagine it probably works, works well for that. But uh, yeah, for me personally, I'd have to say I would prefer a crossbow, simply because it doesn't have any running costs and is more consistent. But for somebody else, this may be great. So I'll post the link down below to where you can find it, and I uh, hope you found the review helpful. Thanks for watching, and have a good one, folks.